this video tutorial, we explore how Prodigy challenges are used to develop deeper understanding and reasoning skills through deductive learning, and importantly, how students achieve a bronze, silver, or gold medal. Now, if this is the first time your students are using a Prodigy challenge, I would firstly introduce Prodigy as a class by pointing out some key features. After all, the more they know, the more likely they are to engage and persist with it. So point out things like, it starts off at the easy level, there are 10 questions in each round, each student get different sets of 10 questions, there are timers associated with the questions, 60 seconds for an easy, 75 seconds for medium, and 120 seconds for extreme and hard questions. At the minimum, we need to aim to get to the hard questions to get a medal. We try and encourage our students to do three rounds of Prodigy in order to get to at least a silver medal. Now a Prodigy challenge usually consists of two components, Teach Me and a Play Now, which takes you straight to the quiz. Whenever available, it is highly recommended that we go through the Teach Me lesson before we play. Teach Me provides a learn mode that allows students to learn the topic at hand. It usually starts off with some common sense based questions. And then we put some words against it. Now when I say words, it tends to introduce common mathematical terms that your students need to learn in order to be able to get through this topic. Students select answers while building the knowledge gradually. So obtuse, reflex. Now rather than providing students with a large chunk of texts or information to process, lessons are generally structured in such a way that students read a little, then practice, then read some more. Now this is important as it is actually the most effective way our brain absorbs information. A way of learning by doing if you wish, but with relevant information provided to support your learning. Once we are done, we start Prodigy. Now a Prodigy quiz starts with the easy level. The idea behind the easy questions is that students are somewhat handheld. Match between 305. So they are provided with enough information to be able to get to the answer just by reading the questions. In other words, there should be enough hints provided within the question itself for the students to learn and get the answer correctly. We're looking for an obtuse. Now there's a timer bar there. It's subtle and yet effective in keeping our students on task. Medium questions are still basic, but it begins to apply some knowledge, but in an extremely basic or fluency kind of way. So for students with some idea, they should be able to get the answer or the question correctly. It's not a dead giveaway like an easy question, so it does require students to have some knowledge. So we know that's an acute reflex and obtuse. Again, three medium questions correct. Students move on to the hard level questions, where they now begin to develop their understanding of the topic. So hard questions doesn't exactly tell you what to do, but it also doesn't deliberately trick you by asking questions in a reverse kind of way. So it's used essentially to prove the student's competency levels. So we know that it's got to be less than 90 degrees. Obtuse is greater than 90, but less than 180. A reflex is greater than 180. Three questions correct. We then move on to extreme level. 
extreme questions are rich and actually probes our students into thinking and apply some problem solving skills as well at times. A good estimate. On completion, your students see a journey. They can return to specific questions to review them simply by clicking on the cells. Now, had they gotten this question wrong, they can click on the solution and actually teaches them how to do it. They can review all 10 questions. So on this summary page, you see how many points we scored. We needed 4,200 points to get a bronze medal, 9,000 to get silver, and 14,000 points to get a gold medal. Now let's play again and try and get ourselves a gold medal. PQS, QPR. Now if I get 10 extreme questions correct, I'm pretty sure I'll get it. A gold medal. MLK and NJK. Two, okay, all right, so an obtuse will need to be added to an acute. NML or LMM. JKL. Straight line to create a full turn. What type of angle must be added to an acute angle to create a right angle? Oops. MNJ or JNM. Match the labels to the marked angles PRS and RSQ. What type of angle must be added to a right angle to create a straight line? Another right angle. P30. Okay, so we achieved a silver medal in this case because we got one wrong. Let's play again, see where we go next time. Which of the following is a good estimate? I'd say it's 80 degrees. What's another good estimate? 85. What angle must be added to an acute angle to create a straight line? It's got to be an obtuse. A, D, C. A, B, C. Match the labels to the marked angle P, R, S, and I, S, Q, N, M, L, or L, M, N, J, K, L. We know it's a small one. F, E, G. And E G F. So that's greater than one eighty. And because we achieved ten questions correctly, we got a gold medal.